welcome back. This is part two of my discussion of The Rise of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi. If you want to watch part one, which I would recommend you do, especially if you don't know what it's about, I will link my first part of this review down below in the description. Basically, I'm just gonna go right back into where I was talking about, what I was talking about. So we're now on the run. We're now on the run. Oh, it was so frustrating. It was so frustrating learning about Kiyoshi's parents and how did they have just abandoned her with um, stolen goods or something along those lines. And I was getting really annoyed with the fact that, you know, she wasn't telling Rangi any of this. Rangi had no idea until she, until Kiyoshi was forced to bring it up to the Daofei. And again, I cannot uh, all blame Rangi for reacting the way she did, all annoyed and <laughs> so much so that she goes and challenges some rando in that ring in that one city that I can't remember the name of. She goes and she fights and she's like, you know what, this is freaking payback for you not telling me anything. I'm like, yes, yes it is. Yes it is. Rangi is so badass. They're literally the power couple of the century. <laughs> oh, people are gonna get so annoyed at me talking, overhyping these two characters, I'm pretty sure. But I just love them so much. They're like, I wouldn't say my OTP, but they're certainly a beloved couple. That is for darn sure. It was so good. And I was also abhorrently horrified when Zhangju kidnapped Rangi, and also the scene with them, um, or maybe, I don't know, the big meeting towards the end of the book in which uh, Zhangju is discussing uh, the Avatar or something to those effects. I mean, every conversation he has with anyone is about the Avatar, so. <laughs> but there's this big meeting at the end, and him and Haidon end up getting poisoned and at first I didn't really know what was going on uh, I was kind of hoping that Jean Ju would just be dead unfortunately he did not then I was really really concerned that Haydon was killed uh, because we just didn't see anything about what happened and then we go to Jean Ju after he wakes up and he's like ha ha that one guy flew right into my plan and reacted the exact same way I was hoping he would and now <laughs> I have the leverage I need and blah blah and I was just so worried that Haidon was just gonna be dead and like, no. So it was very uncertain what happened at that meeting and I was, wasn't was gonna go back and like re-listen to it or anything, but I was just very concerned that Haidon would again be dead. And I was like, no, damn it, Rangi needs her mom. There's a lot of tension between Rangi and her mom because of what her mom has been known to have done in her past. I mean, she, killed a lot of people accidentally in a lot of Agni Kai fights, I think, is what was uh, that part of her past that Zhangju so joyfully brought up. Or no, um, the pirate. I almost completely forgot about the woman pirate. And the fifth nation! There's a fifth nation? <laughs> I'm just like, what land do they claim exactly? Are they just like a bunch of random islands and the seas? I was just like, oh... There's a fifth nation. There was a fifth nation at any given time. I'm so used to there only being four and it was very hard to wrap my mind around it. But that whole meeting with Yoon and you know everyone else uh, going to that meeting and them sneaking amok into that meeting. And I was just like, oh, this is just so not gonna go well. And the whole time I'm thinking like, yeah, this thing is literally going to be a trap. And so Kiyoshi literally like outs herself by bending the ocean bed up so Jean Ju can use it to fight and I'm just like whoa <laughs> again Kiyoshi's awesome and I love her so much that's great and it's just such a big like confidence booster and also unfortunately kind of led Kelsong along the road to believing that Kiyoshi is in fact the avatar and for a second I think I might have misunderstood the wording of that scene but I thought she had like somehow water bended as well 
as earth bending. But no, she just literally lifted up the seabed <laughs> to a more reachable place for the earthbenders to use to fight back. And I'm just like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, Aang could never. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, the fact that her mom was a runaway airbender, I don't even remember how that happened. Did she? Oh, no. She met her husband, Kiyoshi's father, and he kind of led her down the path to sin <laughs> and uh, Dalfeism. And I was just like, oh, that's, that's cool. And you know what? I really wish that her parents were still alive. I really wish they had been forced to own up to the fact that they abandoned their child just because she took up too much space and maybe because it would have been safer for her to grow up away from all that. Yeah, fine. But I still would have liked for them to have faced consequences and not to have died three years before Kiyoshi got a chance to reunite with them to make them see what their daughter has become and make them regret it because for God's sakes, your child is the freaking avatar. You did. <laughs> Oi. Oi. And I loved all of the Dao Fei. We got to know them all. And when they all decided that, yes, they would uh, train Kiyoshi in bending with their different elements. Um, and Kiyoshi wakes up one morning and they're all standing above her. Rongi and Wong and uh, Kimira? Oh, I don't remember what her name is. The waterbender. Karima? Karima? I think that's what her name is. I'm going to remember it later and smack myself for getting it wrong. But they're all standing over her and they're like, Wong is just like, oh, look, the Avatar is trying to sleep on the job. And then the Earthbends are awake and oh, it was just so good. Over time, I really enjoyed all of the Dao Fei and how we got to know them all a little bit by bit and how Kyoshi earned their trust by standing up for them when the evil yellow neck overlord kind of threatened them. Oh boy, that prison break. I was like, I was pretty on edge by the time that they broken the prisoner out who happened to be the ultimate yellow neck overlord, whatever, whose name, again, I cannot remember. <laughs> but I was just sitting here like, um, he's being really weird. And he's just like so grateful. And I'm like, you're really creeping me out. And then, oh, He's the biggest bad anyone's ever had to deal with since the death of Kurik. Great. And we broke him out of prison. Fantastic. But then, you know, it was resolved when Kyoshi challenged him to a duel and killed him. Can't say I'm all that fond of how they're going about Kyoshi's dealing with things. Like, she's just killing people just like okay you know what that's maybe not the greatest so yeah basically I just loved a lot in almost everything about this book except for the fact that there were no real consequences to Kiyoshi's parents abandoning her as a child nobody really got punished for that and yeah, but I really love the moment when Kyoshi goes and opens the box after all this time. We're just sitting here wondering what the hell it is that she's carrying with her all this time as a runaway. And we open it and we see the fans and the headdress and I'm just like, yes, and the makeup. Oh my goodness. I just, I really loved everything. And especially like, Wong helping her get ready by putting the makeup on her face and I was just, oh, it was so sweet and I was like yes it's all so empowering <laughs> oh so empowering and I love how Lek the earthbender um Dao Fei really bonded and was really excited about being able to ride on Pung Pung again and he was trying so hard to get Pung Pung to favorite uh to prefer him over Kiyoshi and Rangi. It was so cute and he was just so excited and I was so sad when Lek died. And so I'm just like, oh, I just cannot wait to see where the next book takes us. 
obviously we leave off with Kyoshi going to the air temple and receiving a message from Kuruk, who visits him in his spirit form, which is the only form he can take. And he's like, I need your help. I did not want to see hide or hair of Kurt because he's just got such a horrible reputation in this book. And I'm just like, you're, no, you're causing so many problems and your problems are still carrying on. Like three generations of avatars, these problems keep showing up and they're all in the spirit world. I'm like, why? God, why? Oh my goodness. I'm assuming Kiyoshi gets it solved because I mean she's lived for like 230 years but and when Yoon came back and killed Jean Ju and almost destroyed that cafe I was literally I was so surprised. Like, I was not expecting that at all. I was literally just, at that point, totally okay with the fact that he's dead. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're dead. You're gone. Nope. He's not. He's going to be a problem for Kiyoshi if he keeps being so... <sighs> screwed up in the head. I hope to read the sequel soon. Um, and I don't know if this is a series or if it's just a duology or what... Or if they're going to do like three books like they did with Avatar. Um, I mean, they got so much possible content they can use because Kyoshi literally lived for 230 years. They've got so many different possibilities as far as the series goes. So it really anything could happen, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in my next video soon. Bye!